Voyager 1's incredible longevity can be traced back to its power source. Unlike spacecraft that rely on solar panels, which are effective only closer to the sun, Voyager draws its energy from three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs. These devices convert heat released by the radioactive decay of plutonium-238 into electrical energy. When the probe launched in 1977, the RTGs produced around 470 watts, enough to light up several household lamps. By 2023, that output had dwindled to nearly half with a decline of about 4 watts per year. As available power continues to shrink, mission managers are faced with increasingly tough choices about which systems to keep running. It's similar to a triage situation. Deciding which instruments are essential for ongoing science goals and which ones must be shut down. Back in 2011, engineers deactivated the heater for the ultraviolet spectrometer, allowing it to function at a chilling minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 79 degrees Celsius, far below its design limits. Surprisingly, it kept working. Inside NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Voyager Mission Operations Center straddles multiple generations of technology. Sleek modern screens sit beside decades-old hardware, still in use to stay in contact with the distant spacecraft. Some team members hadn't been born when Voyager lifted off. Others have spent their entire professional lives working on it. Many compare their role to caring for an aging but cherished family member, recognizing its frailty while being amazed at its endurance. Twice a year, Voyager 1 must execute a roll maneuver to keep its high-gain antenna precisely pointed at Earth. These adjustments consume precious hydrazine fuel, an irreplaceable resource. It's estimated the probe has enough left to maintain orientation control until around 2040. Still, dwindling power will likely end the mission before that point. To extend its life, engineers have developed ingenious software updates transmitted across billions of miles that reduce how often the thrusters must fire. The Deep Space Network, massive radio antennas located in California, Spain, and Australia, dedicates hours each day to listening for Voyager's faint transmissions. After traveling for over 21 hours, these signals arrive barely above the background noise of the cosmos. Specialized processing techniques are used to extract intelligible data from what otherwise resembles static. Voyager's data rate is painstakingly slow, only 160 bits per second, a tiny fraction of modern internet speeds. Yet despite its limitations, Voyager 1 continues to collect critical data. Its cosmic ray sensor detects high-energy particles originating from beyond the solar system. The plasma wave instrument measures electron densities in interstellar space. Meanwhile, the magnetometer tracks invisible magnetic fields between the stars. Combined, these tools paint a rare and valuable picture of a region we cannot access in any other way, the vast medium through which our solar system travels around the Milky Way. Estimates suggest Voyager may continue relaying scientific information until sometime between 2025 and 2030. After that, power levels will no longer be sufficient to run both the instruments and communications. Even so, the spacecraft will continue silently drifting through the galaxy, an emissary from Earth bound for the stars. The first anomaly. More than four decades into its journey, long after most of the original team had left or passed on, Voyager 1 began transmitting something unexpected. Hidden in routine telemetry was a peculiar signal, a faint rhythmic vibration, a low-frequency hum unlike anything previously recorded by its plasma wave sensor. The sound was confined to a narrow frequency range and pulsed with striking regularity. The anomaly was first noticed during a routine scan of the interstellar medium's electron density. At first, engineers suspected a malfunction. The spacecraft, after all, was operating far beyond its designed lifespan, with hardware dating back to the 1970s. Diagnostics were run and data from other instruments were cross-checked. Yet the strange hum remained and was picked up by various receivers within NASA's Deep Space Network. Suddenly, what had been a routine operation took on a tone of urgency. Longtime mission staff remarked that this pattern did not resemble any known cosmic noise, solar output, or instrumentation error. Its structured nature, repeating with mathematical precision, hinted at either a natural phenomenon that had yet to be observed or something with an intelligent design. Some were reminded of the initial discovery of pulsars, once jokingly dubbed Little Green Men, before being explained as neutron stars. NASA assembled a multidisciplinary team of experts, radio astronomers, plasma scientists, and data analysts. 
they compared the hum to vast databases of known astronomical signals, from pulsars and magnetars to active galactic nuclei. Still, there was no match. The pattern did not conform to any theoretical model. It wasn't brief or fleeting either. The signal persisted, ruling out rare cosmic events like supernovae or gamma ray bursts. Voyager had detected something completely unfamiliar, something no one had predicted back when the mission was launched. The sensation among the team was eerie, like hearing a knock in a room you thought was empty. Voyager 1, humankind's most distant envoy, had stumbled upon a mystery. The Mysterious Course Change Soon after the detection of the mysterious signal, another oddity surfaced in Voyager 1's telemetry. The spacecraft had subtly changed its orientation. This shift in attitude occurred without any instruction from Earth. Data revealed thruster activity, but no commands had been issued from mission control. Initially, engineers examined old backup procedures that could have been triggered automatically, perhaps a long-forgotten script buried in the system. They reviewed fail-safe routines designed to kick in under critical failure scenarios. None explained the maneuver. More curiously, the thruster firings were not random. They followed a calculated pattern that changed the probe's direction in a controlled way. Even stranger was the new orientation itself. Voyager had turned its inactive camera platform toward an unremarkable patch of sky, one that held no prominent stars, galaxies, or known objects of interest. It appeared the spacecraft was now pointed at something undetectable by our most powerful telescopes. The timing raised eyebrows. The orientation shift occurred just days after the hum was first picked up, suggesting a link. Could these two anomalies be separate coincidences, or were they part of a single phenomenon? Statistically, it seemed unlikely that they were unrelated. Back at JPL, mission analysts worked around the clock. The air was thick with tension, the constant hum of electronics, and the aroma of brewed coffee filling the room. Trajectory models, system logs, and past telemetry were reviewed in exhaustive detail. One by one, conventional explanations were ruled out. The change in orientation wasn't momentary. It held steady for weeks, indicating it wasn't a glitch or temporary drift. The maneuver had been real, deliberate, and permanent. Whatever prompted the course change appeared to have genuinely altered Voyager's path through the stars. Patterns in the data. As scrutiny of the hum and the trajectory shift deepened, researchers found a new irregularity. Voyager's radio signal carried subtle changes in pitch and timing, variations that once analyzed displayed repeating recognizable patterns. These weren't distortions caused by the interstellar medium, but appeared to be structured data. When charted visually, the patterns took on geometric shapes, recursive sequences, and balanced intervals. Some resembled reflections of Voyager's own signals, as though something were echoing or imitating the spacecraft's communication style. The modulations were consistent across different transmissions, eliminating the chance of a one-time fluke. NASA brought in specialists in cryptography and machine learning. Sophisticated pattern recognition software was deployed to compare the modulations against everything from natural space phenomena to known mathematical codes. A chilling discovery emerged. Parts of the pattern bore resemblance to segments of the Arecibo message, humanity's own radio transmission sent toward the stars in 1974. The scientific world was split. Some believed the signals had natural origins. Perhaps Voyager had passed through a rare plasma field or an unusual magnetic region affecting its electronics. But others couldn't ignore the organized, intentional feel of the signal structure. It was too regular, too intricate. Private conferences and academic debates exploded with theories. Some physicists proposed new models of how space might interact with spacecraft electronics. SETI researchers debated the implications if the signals were of intelligent origin. Skeptics developed layered technical models to show how system failures might simulate artificial-looking signals. Officially, NASA kept a reserved tone. The signal was labeled an unexplained pattern under analysis. But internally, many scientists were baffled. No conventional theory could fully account for what they were observing. The mystery soon became a global effort. Universities, observatories, and labs around the world joined the analysis, offering fresh perspectives and analytical tools. What had begun as a strange glitch had evolved into a worldwide scientific investigation, an interdisciplinary mystery pulling in fields from astronomy to information theory. 
Voyager's lasting legacy. Regardless of how the anomalies are ultimately explained, whether by exotic natural processes, technical malfunctions, or something more extraordinary, they mark the final chapter in one of humankind's greatest ventures. A probe originally built to operate for five years has endured for nearly 50, reshaping our view of the solar system and beyond. During its prime, Voyager revealed active volcanism on Io, the structure of Saturn's rings, and a stunning variety of moons. Its extended mission allowed the first direct exploration of the interstellar medium. Even in its final days, it sends back priceless data from a region we cannot explore any other way. Voyager's legacy goes beyond science. The golden record it carries is humanity's longest-lasting cultural artifact, a time capsule that could outlive Earth itself. The iconic pale blue dot image forever altered our sense of place in the universe. And the spacecraft itself, a 1970s machine still functioning at the edge of the solar system, stands as a tribute to human determination and creativity. Even if the recent anomalies prove mundane, they've already pushed scientific boundaries by prompting new models and analytical techniques. If they are truly unprecedented, they might force us to rethink what we know about space itself. In both cases, knowledge is gained, and that is the essence of exploration. Voyager 1 will continue silently coasting through space long after its systems go dark. In about 40,000 years, it will come within 1.6 light years of the star Gliese 445. Barring an unlikely collision, it will drift through the galaxy for billions of years, perhaps long after humanity has vanished. Its golden record might one day be all that remains of our species. What did Voyager encounter in the void? Why did it shift course? What encoded the patterns in its transmissions? These questions may never be fully answered, but in asking them and following this tiny probe across unimaginable distances, we continue the timeless human pursuit of the unknown. Voyager reminds us that there are wonders in the cosmos we have yet to understand, and that the journey itself is the greatest discovery of all. Thanks for joining us for this episode. Don't forget to click the video on your screen now to explore more mind-expanding content.